As this is a short module, now seems to be a good time for a little public service announcement. There are a lot of controversies regarding medicine. Some have logical concerns, and others are a little more fringe or conspiracies that seem to prey on people's fear. Though these lectures will focus on the evidence-based models of medicine, it is a good idea for all practicing or potential healthcare professionals to be alerted to some of these claims, causes, and resources used by those with differing views. You certainly won't be able to get through to a patient if you can't understand their points, and patient care may suffer. Instead, try asking probing questions about their reasoning and fears. This works much better than trying to correct misinformation. Now, there isn't really a lot to cover in this module, so here goes another quick tier lecture. For the Ellis sisters, which one is likely to come from a cat bite or scratch? Here is where the BCYE medium really helps to differentiate between the two commonly associated with cats and dogs. Pastorella not being associated with BCYE medium is the correct answer here. A veterinarian comes to the office with several weeks of a waxing and waning fever. This presentation is suspicious for brucellosis. Few diseases are usually described as giving an undulating fever. Next, a hunter recently caught his prize-winning deer several days ago. He courted the buck and returned home. Now he presents with an ulcer on his arm. This is classic for the presentation of tularemia. Remember that animals can lead to tick bites, often leading to this presentation. For the first of the stepsister group, a female patient comes into the clinic with low abdominal pain to the left side. She also had a positive STD test a few years ago and is unsure about her previous treatment. What is the disease to be most concerned about and which bug causes it? Gardnerella is the most common cause of bacterial vaginosis and responsible for PID, which can lead to sterility. Gynecologists and general practitioners should consider culture for this patient's presentations with vaginosis. Next, we have a patient presenting with painless nodules on their hands and little purplish lines on their fingernails. This patient has Janeway lesions and splinter hemorrhages. If you recall, in the first module, we had many bacterial causes of infective endocarditis. These were two of the presentations we discussed for this disease. Here, a patient presents with fairly vague symptoms of fatigue, muscle aches, and a mild fever. A few days later, the microbe fails to grow on BCYE medium, which is the most likely pathogen. Coxiella can present as Q fever. This disease doesn't stand out from many other similar symptoms on test questions, so something obvious would need to be given to think of this. The BCYE growth limits our options to the stepsisters of this module. The next patient is a little boy that is brought in by his mother since he hasn't been eating well lately. He seems always tired. They report also recently purchasing a new kitten that bites and claws at them when hand feeding. Upon physical examination, you find a bright red vascular lesion on the boy, indicating bacillary angiomatosis. This is caused by the Bartonella bacteria, which can be commonly found on animal nails and paws. And lastly for this tier, a patient comes to see her gynecologist due to a fishy vaginal odor and discharge. Only one bacteria covered in this module is common for genital urinary diseases. Gardnerella vaginosis has a distinct odor and coloration to be aware of. This helps differentiate it from other vaginosis causes. That finishes up this tier for module 6. Take some time during the module to utilize the flashcards and outside recommended resources as well. Many of them are humorous or provide a good graphic representation to supplement the material covered in this and previous modules. If you like the material so far, consider writing a review in course or leave a comment on our YouTube videos to help us improve and help others find the material as well. If you're interested in creating content yourself, please contact us. We'd love to help make more open source material for content creation.